What's that? Oh, no, nothing. All right, so we are recording, and the first request was to talk about um, ductus arteriosus and circulation thereof, and we have no markers in this room, unfortunately, so I'm going to go steal one from you. circulation in, in mammals, and one of the interesting things about mammals is as we go from being in utero to being born, we go through the same kind of transition that lungfishes go through. So we'll begin with the heart, and we have how many chambers? Four. Yeah, you can think about it a couple different ways. We have four in the sense that one is divided two sides, left and right, that's the atrium, and the ventricles divided uh, into two sides. Left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. We have aortic arches, just like uh, other vertebrates do, only during development we've gradually reduced them and lost many of them. So we have one arch that will go to the lung, return blood to the left atrium, and we have other arches that will form circulation out to the body. And circulation to the head. So we have both systemic and pulmonary arches. You get both of those starting with which organism? What was the first place we saw a pulmonary circulation? Lungfish. All right, so that has a very deep origin within vertebrates. Deoxygenated blood is going to come from the right, will come to the right atrium. We've been a little bit vague about what's happening at the ventricles, unlike what you would see in lungfish or a lot of other vertebrates. Since we have a complete division in both the atria and the ventricles, we need to keep, or we can keep, those bloodstreams separate even as they leak. So it's just make it a little more accurate for what it is we actually wish to achieve. So make the right ventricle go to pulmonary circulation left ventricle give rise to I'm going to make it very quick because it's not easy to see. Give rise to the systemic circulation. Is this diagram okay? So if we were to follow blood on the right ventricle, this is going to go out to pulmonary circulation, comes back to the left side, and goes out to the systemic circulation. So we can call this a double circulation or a divided circulation or both. So double circulation just means you have both a pulmonary and systemic circuit. Divided circulation means you've got a complete division. But this doesn't actually work very well for us in utero. Why is that? can't get any blood going through the pulmonary circulation because the lungs are collapsed. So we need to do something with this blood that's coming in from the right side. So we have the same thing a lungfish has, right? And that's a connection between pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. And what do we call this guy here? Ductus arteriosus. So that's our connection between pulmonary and systemic circulation. Oops. 
So we started out wanting to follow blood flow. So I'm going to add just a little bit more detail here. And this is where I wish I had a red pen to draw. There are actually multiple sources of deoxygenated blood coming into the right atrium. One of them is going to come from the placenta, so this is one big sterile in utero. And so that will have high amounts of oxygen, relatively high. And the other one will come from the body, and that will have low oxygen. That all makes sense. And the challenge is that we want to get oxygenated blood, particularly to the head. And we're not so concerned about whether you have a mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood going through the body, so we're okay with mixing those if we have to. So, So if we've got highly oxygenated blood coming here and poorly oxygenated blood coming here, mixing them together at that point isn't going to serve us very well. What ends up happening is that this very poorly oxygenated blood just continues down to the right ventricle. Remember what happens to the highly oxygenated blood from the placenta? What goes into the right atrium and then where? Yeah, so there's a shunt between the two sides of the heart. And you recall what this structure is? Okay, you can't just kind of oval. Foramen ovale, so foramen means opening. So foramen ovale. So again, we've got two streams of blood coming into the right atrium. It'd be great to keep them separate. It turns out that by the way the vessels coming into the right atrium are oriented, they can be kept reasonably separate so that the deoxygenated blood tends to go out into the pulmonary circuit. The oxygenated blood goes through the foramen ovale and into the left ventricle. From there, the only place it can go is out of the systemic circulation which has a branch off to the head before this oxygenated blood gets mixed up with this deoxygenated blood and comes to the foramen ovale. So the body ends up getting mixed blood and the head gets pretty well oxygenated blood. Does that seem okay? So while we're here, the, the question was more about the role of the ductus arteriosus, but it's worth thinking about what happens at birth. Birth, they don't do this anymore, but back in the day they would slap the baby's bottom to get it to cry. <gasps> Lungs fill. The resistance here goes way down. Uh, sorry, here, I mean the pulmonary artery. So now blood that's coming up through this arch has a choice between either going through the ductus arteriosus into systemic circulation, which is relatively high resistance, or going into the pulmonary circulation, which is relatively low. So what's it going to do? Yeah, it's going to go to the pulmonary. The fluids are going to go towards areas of low resistance, given the choice. So now it starts to go here. That means a lot more blood starts coming into the left atrium, and it's oxygenated blood. What does that do to the foramen of valley? Previously, you had oxygenated blood from the placenta crossing over into the left atrium because there wasn't anything else going in there, so the pressure was really low. So lots of blood is coming back. This is going to increase the pressure in the left atrium, and how does that influence the movement across the foramen of valve? Yeah, so at the very least, the increase in pressure here is going to make it harder for blood to come from the right side to the left side. And as Dakota mentioned, there is a membrane here that typically gets pushed over. Uh, so if you saw me poking around looking at the foramen of valley in lab, <clears throat> you actually have to 
poke around to get around membranes to actually get in there and see that. So that blocks that off. So now you've got oxygenated blood going out in systemic circulation, coming in here, get to the septic soteriosis. This is low resistance this way. This is high resistance that way. What's this oxygenated blood going to hook to? Yeah, we'll tend to go down the ductus arteriosus because it's so easy to move through the pulmonary circulation. So that goes there in addition to going here. What kind of muscle or what kind of cells of relevance to us are around the ductus arteriosus? Smooth muscle cells that react to high levels of oxygen and there are other things, transition and so on. So then this starts to squeeze down and eventually it'll squeeze shut. So now there's no pathway for this oxygenated blood to go back through here and you have a completely divided circulation. Because uh, all these vessels, or the lungs expand and Vessels are no longer constricted by the collapsed lung. So, if they so the baby will inhale. So, of course, the fluid comes out of the lungs and it will inhale. So, all that stuff gets expanded out and that, that decreases resistance. And there's probably also vasodilation and stuff that goes on. Usually, people just describe it as inflation of the lung helps ventilation, helps uh, perfusion. Well, indirectly. So there's higher pressure coming back to the left atrium, <clears throat> which means that this oxygenated blood isn't going to go through the foramen ovale. It's going to come around here. And since resistance is low on the pulmonary side and higher on the systemic side, the pressure is higher over here. So that's going to drive oxygenated blood down through the ductus arteriosus. And if it's oxygenated, it's going to cause smooth muscle cells to contract. So it's the difference in pressure that drives the oxygenated blood that way, but it's the oxygen itself that causes the smooth muscles to contract. I like venal circulation. I think it's a very nice system. And I like the fact that we can look at it in lab and see it in action. getting this idea about wouldn't it be fun to take fluids and pump them through the heart from the vena cavi and block off the pulmonary circulation and inflate it. I wonder if we could, when we inflate the lungs with air, might maybe get it to change. Well, I'll have to 